So call bruv, it is so good to meet you. Uh-huh. Uh, here we are in your home here in Baltimore County. And I want you to tell me what your experiences are like today in 2021. We're in June 2021. And uh, tell me what music is like for you right now. Okay, well, first of all, like I just had my cataract removed. So now I can see, because before I would uh, I would look and I would look at Barbara and I would see two of her, <laughs> you know. Well, you know that might be a good thing. <laughs> and, uh, and I look at TV and I see two screens, you know. So I say, wow. So like you know, like I was waiting for that to happen, and when that happened, it's like almost a, a weight lifted up off of me. Now I can see, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Really, from there, so like now I'm gonna get ready, to get down to my basement and get to my computer because I got a lot of music on on my computer that that I need to print out, you know, for 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 the kids because like I'm gonna have the kids play playing with me um, with uh, our group. What is it called? The new generation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah the new generation. So, and actually, Todd. Um, Todd uh, helped us name 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 the group, but like uh, yeah, I'm having them playing with me. But uh, yeah, you know, playing actually playing now, I'm beginning to hear some different things. That's amazing. You know, I mean, it's really some different, and I'm beginning to understand the things I was hearing that I wasn't able to work on because I was teaching. You know, like you know, when you teach and you got to teach, then you got to shut down. You know, you get your mind clear to be able to be able to play. Now the teaching thing, you know, like uh, teaching classes are over, and I have the time and the space to really go ahead and think things through. And sometimes it may take a day, sometimes it may take a week, but uh, uh, it's getting there. Yeah, I wanted to ask you uh, the difference from. Uh, being a music scholar and educator, how is that different from being a musician? Well, see, one of the things like you have to do is like um, you got to write out reports, you know. Like, and I'm terrible at writing out reports. I have to really, really depend on on my wife Barbara to help me with that. So, like, you know, you got to write a report for every kid, and like, and like, you have a kid for three weeks then they want you to write a report. You don't know the kid within three weeks, you know? It takes you at least uh, a half a year to know who, who, who they are so that you can really really write something honest about them. So like, you know, so so that would take up a lot of time and then um, the, 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 I guess the driving back and forth and you know, that took up some time. Then they would have meetings in the morning, right? Like seven, seven o'clock in the morning. I only had two classes, you yeah. Know? But then, like the two classes that I had would like would have a gap of three or four hours in between. Yeah. So like it was like so, so anyway that kind of stuff was going on. But uh, I, I did that for about twenty years. You know, really was was, was good for me because um, it helped help me survive. You know, like I, without worrying about. Oh, I gotta take a gig, even though I don't want to take a gig, because I need the money. I didn't have to do that. You right, know? right. Um, so I had to really. Actually, Barbara was the one that helped me. <laughs> yeah. Get, get get that gig. That's you know. But uh, yeah. But like now that I'm retired from that, uh, I'm back to where I was, and like and and working out the things that I that I need to work out. So like. Uh, my playing is starting to grow now, you know, like, I mean, just really, really grow with ideas, different ideas that I was thinking about. I'm competing them now. You know, I find that to be uh, very amazing. You know, I spent a lot of time with uh, a lot of older musicians, and to hear you guys talk about learning new things, you know, I, I was with Warren Smith, the, mm-hmm. the great percussionist, and he's also a wonderful educator in New York. And he plays on these uh, very large uh, Tiffany drums. Mm. And uh, he, he, he dropped a soda cap on the head of a drum and he 
He says, oh, that was an interesting sound. I got to work on that. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to see your mind go through that process of creativity, even with uh, something very small like that. And I want you to tell me, where does that come from? Uh, you know, like, it, it comes from years. You know, like, I, 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 you know, like, I watch people, you know, like, I'm a people watcher. I watch musicians play, and if, if I hear them playing something that I like, and, and I can figure it out, I'll make it my own. I'm, you know, that's part, that's part of my legs. And, like, that's the way jazz works. And, like, you know, like from... Over, over the years, I accumulated so many different things, and some of them I could work on, some of them I didn't have a chance to work on. Um, but like um, overall, like it, it began to develop my sound, my style of playing. You know, uh, actually my voice. Now that's the thing. Like when I was younger, I didn't know what my voice was. Yeah. Now I hear my voice. So now, I, since I hear my voice, I can go ahead and bring it out and express it. But not only that, like I'm, I'm doing it not just on alto, on soprano, and I have a tenor that I, that um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna start working on. So I'm gonna start uh, playing. I found playing tenor, certain songs work better on tenor than alto yeah. for me. So, and. Um, and actually, I wrote a thing man, like um, off of Joy Spring, I uh, called Springy, and it's and it's using like the Coltrane changes, uh, you know, like um, within within that piece. And like I haven't really only I think I played it a couple of times, but I haven't really been able to play it. So I'm gonna start bringing those things out that um, I've been um, working on. So like um, I think I got a a new sound going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you just mentioned uh, John Coltrane, and uh, I purposely did not mention your relationship to John Coltrane, because everybody knows historically that you, your relationship with John Coltrane, mm -hmm. and I wanted to begin our talk with uh, Talk, to talk about Carl Grubbs, mm -hmm. the fine educator and musician in his own right. And I want to go back to you, when you mentioned about uh, finding that voice. And I want you to tell me uh, what the process is like to uh, bringing that voice into the sound that comes out of the horn. Okay, well, all right. I me and my brother had a group called The Visitors. When you mentioned your brother. Yeah. And that, your brother is? Yeah, oh, Earl, er, Earl Grubbs. Oh, okay. And uh, one of the things that would happen, like, he would go out and do the gigs, and I was too young to do the gigs, and he would come back and, like, and he would show me the stuff that he learned and all that kind of thing. So that, and then uh, it got to the point where, okay, you know, like, and we would play, I would play piano, and he would play saxophone. He would play piano, I would play saxophone. And um, we, we kind of got the same kind of harmony theory thing going on together, but we were approaching it differently. And like, one of the things that happened was like, um, I, I began to hear what I sound like, you know, like um, as compared to what other people sound like or the way I was approaching things, you know. And like, that's something that, um, uh, musicians got to, you know, at least, you know, begin to recognize, although I'm still using the harmony and theories, I mean, like, I'm, I'm using that, but, like, I'm just approaching it a little differently. I'm approaching it the way that, the way that I hear it. You know, when you work with uh, young music students, what do you find to be their natural ability? What what natural ability in young musicians do you find that come out first? Well, I think the ability of them wanting to be able to do it. Yeah. You know, like, and I find some kids, you know, they, they don't care. They, they're just there just for the ride or whatever. Then you have some kids that really want to do it. 
And those kids that really want to do it, like, really, really pay attention. And so, so therefore, like, you know, when you start to talk about the music, you know, um, you can really um, let them know what's going on and what, what they can work on when, when uh, they go home. But I never tell them that anything is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> never yeah. tell, you know, you know, never tell them, oh, this, this song is a hard song or this, you know, no, this, this is how you play it. And this is the fingerings that you use. If you're playing saxophone or clarinet or mm -hmm. these are the chords on, on, on uh, piano and, you know, and I always tell them about the swing of things, you know, like, um, you know, you, when you play, you have to be able to swing. And if you're not swinging, then like, um, I think you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know, especially playing jazz. Right. What attributes do you find that kids pick up most? Um, I think they 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 like improvisation. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, like once they can learn the melody, and then you show them, okay, well, this you can use this scale, the solo on. Like, and most like when the kids are really young, you you teach them and use modal. Uh, a concept where if they're gonna play, they 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 just use one scale to solo on, or or you teach them the blues, which is just three chords that 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 you know that that you work on, then and, and um, you find like they enjoy that whole fact of being able to uh, do do their own thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and and you know and. Then let them you let them know like this is not written down, you know this is something that um, I'm not making it up because I got it from some other musicians who got it from some other exactly. musicians. So like you know when you play the blues, you know it's supposed to sound like the blues. It can't sound like a etude or something else. It got to have that funk stuff going in it when you play. People automatically say, oh, you know, and they start patting their feet and shaking their heads and making them and start dancing, you know. Right, right. You know. What's the difference between the students that you're working with now and the students you began with in the beginning of your career? Oh, well, I, I'm going to tell you, this is a funny story, you know, like when, um, when, when, when me and Barbara, we started the camp, Right, so like, and I was going to teach these kids about improvisation and all that. So I find myself writing all these scales up on the board. <laughs> scales, you know, like in major scales and minor scales, and you know, and they didn't have any instruments. They just looking, you know, and and the reality came to me and said, "Hey, you know, he." This is not going to work. What you need to do is give them an instant, <laughs> you know, and let them make some sounds, and then you'll be able to talk to them about that. But it just took me uh, a couple of days to figure that, uh, figure that out. And I yeah. said, oh, no, that's not, how, that's not how you do it. You know, that's not how I learned how to play, you know. Yeah, you, know, you, yeah. you have the instrument, you know, you get a, get a chance to, Play it, and then like one of the things that we do at the camp, we let the kids take the instruments home. So like you know, like and I don't know what they practice or not, but they they when they went home, I saw a smile on their face. You know, I got I got my saxophone, I got my guitar, and I'm yeah, like, you know, yeah. you know, and, and it, it gives them that feeling that um they're part of something, and 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 the fact that. Uh, and they probably did pick it, pick this man up and play when they when they were at home, you know. But um, yeah, that's basically what I'm finding that, that that I try to do now. Although now I'm not really involved in teaching that much now, you know. I think uh, I'm really going into the fact of uh, writing and producing and and and, and doing some gigs. Yeah. You know, that, uh, yeah. You know. So where did your first musical experience start? 
And um, it fell off of you. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, you had this guy, Nate Mary. Well, not, yeah, well, the first gig was um, Nate Mary. Like we played in the pool hall. Yeah. Now, what year was this? Oh, uh, man, 50. Must have been 59. Okay. You know, like, and, and we. Uh, we got paid five dollars, you know, yeah, for yeah. playing. You know, like we didn't know we wasn't really playing anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but you know, but, but but we got, you know, we got um, paid for playing, and that's a, oh, that's that was nice, you know, like yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and and, and oh, actually before then, like I was, I played at church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what and, was that experience like? Oh man, well, I was ready to fall out. <laughs> you know, and I think I where did I play? Um, I forgot the name of the gospel song that I played. Um, and uh, afterwards, you know, actually, I didn't know what I was playing. I played, and I was so nervous I couldn't even hear the horn. You know? <laughs> but then, you know, after <coughs> a lady came up and gave me two dollars, it said, "Oh, son, you really sound great." I said, "Wow," you know. So that you know, like. That was that was the first time playing in public, and then after that, it's just been, you know, uh, the pool hall, and then it's interesting. Like, um, uh, there was a group called the Guild of Contemporary Culture, mm -hmm. and Owen Marshall was the guy that ran ran the Guild of Contemporary Culture, and um, they they used to rehearse at, at, at our house on Thompson Street, and my brother was playing in the band. My brother was playing alto. I was playing clarinet. You know, so my brother, when he went to high school, he he got a tenor. So then I wound up switching from clarinet to alto, and then next thing I know, they drafted me in the band. Wow! <laughs> you know, so so you know, I said, wow, you know, like, and I couldn't read that well, you know, but like, you know, they were there. Um, Showing me what to do, and and at some point we was working six nights a week. Wow! You know, wow. like um, yeah, within a year or so, it's like I would, you know, work, you know, do do when I was in high school, do do the gigs, and then uh, go to sleep and get up and and, and go to school. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, Alfie Pollard and Leo Gatson. You know, I spent a lot of time with those guys in Philadelphia. They talk about you often. And, and the question I love to ask them, and I'm going to ask you as well, tell me what was the music scene like in Philadelphia when you were growing up? Oh, I think it was amazing because like we had guys from Germantown and they had their style of playing, they had the guys from West Philly and they had their thing going on and, and, and we were from North Philly, you know, so like, you know, so we had these three different uh, uh, groups going on and like we would go and, and sit in with the West Philly group and you know the West Philly group would come and sit in with us and we go up to Germantown I think yeah by Lancaster was uh yeah yeah you know, was the guy in Germantown um so like and then Jerome Hunter uh was bass player that went to school with, with my brother so you know like uh, we would go up and hang out with them like we were really learning how to play, you yeah. know, like, you know, learn, learning different songs. Who had the latest, I think, when the train came out with um, uh, some of the blues, right. you know, and I heard C Sharp playing it. I said, wow, that, you know, it sounds just like train playing it. You know, you know I, I wanted to get the song, I so I had to go hunt for the person that had the song <laughs> written down. You know, it happens before the fake books were happening. Yeah. You know. What was the difference uh, <coughs> between each of the sounds in the different parts of Philadelphia? What made those sounds different? Well, I think the the guys in Germantown were more avant-garde, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the guys in West Philly were really bluesy. Right, you know, right. type of town like, and, and and we were like, um, I guess in the middle of that, you know, like, but like we were at some point we were listening to 
train and miles. So like we we were right. trying trying to lock into that yeah. until I like uh, ran into Bird, and then <laughs> when that happened, I said, "Wait a minute, I'm studying this." And then I hear this guy playing all this all this stuff. What's going on? You know, like yeah. that, that took me back. I said, wait a minute. Wow. You know. But I think it was good because um, you know, I had a chance to really begin to study um uh Bird and listen to him and, and, and listen to what he's playing and see the relationship between Bird and Train. Right, right. And right. you know, like uh like you know, like Train had had taken some stuff from from Burr, you know, right. like, and 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 turned it around a little bit, and and used it himself. You know? Right now, as an educator, there are two things you mentioned in terms of the way you describe Bird and this other stuff, and you talked about out of Germantown where it was avant garde. Right. I wanted to start with the other stuff first. Like I. And I still hear some new stuff coming from him. You know, like, I mean, it's just amazing. Even with Train, I hear some new things coming coming from um, his plan, too. It's almost like they're, they're in another zone. Yeah. You so know? what is that new stuff? What? Explain that to me. What, what are you hearing differently? Because, you know, these songs were mm -hmm. produced... 50, 60 years ago. So what is this new stuff that you're beginning to hear? Well, you know, one of the things, like, um, I find when you really know a song and, you know, like, and you're playing, and, like, you're using the change, that's why you start, you know, that's why you have to really pay attention to all the changes to begin to pay attention to the sound that, that you're hearing and with, within the, in, in, in your ears. So. A lot of times you go away from all of that and like, you know, it's, it's almost, you're automatically playing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, 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 it might not be a rhyme or reason, you know, that, that you could say why you played that, but like it's there, you yeah. know. And yeah. you say, oh wow, oh, let, let me try that again, you know. And um, a lot of times I find like, uh, that's the stuff I can't write down, you know, right. I just, just got to go after it. And when it's when it's happening, do it. And it happens more like when I play more, then I begin to uh, be able to do it. Uh, I have a song called Saturn, mm -hmm. you know, and Saturn is a fifteen-four, you know, like. Um, but like I find with that song, I can I can go there, right? You know, where right. I can start playing a lot of different things that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily play on on um, a standard, you know. Right. Say, you know, like right. and this, it's I guess it's harmonic, melodic. It's 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 it's, it's, it's avant garde. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. avant garde. It's bebop. Right. <laughs> it's all right. that stuff mixed up together. That's that's. Yeah. You know. So you allowed me to segue into uh, what you described. Uh, that was going on in Germantown, and that was the avant-garde. And I want you to sort of break that down as an educator uh, in terms of what that means musically. Okay, um, well, one of the things, like, Eric Dolphy. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like you, li you listen to him play, say, man, it doesn't sound like he's playing changes. Eric knew how to play changes, you know. But he, had, but he was hearing something else. He was hearing his voice, you know. So his voice wasn't talking about, oh, I, I gotta play um, uh, these changes. Anyway, like uh, Barry Lancaster was really uh, coming from that point of view. Yeah. You know where um, he, you know, like he would. Um, he, I mean, he could play, man. Man, he could play. And, and but uh, he was coming from the avant-garde point of view, mm -hmm. you know, like um, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, you know, sound similar to uh, Eric Dolphy, right? You know, right. so um, and uh, I know I was working on, you know, trying to, you know, deal with Train's music and Charlie Parker's music, and and during that time, the avant-garde <laughs> was coming into view for me because like, I figured I had. These are the things I had to go through 
in order to be able to play. Yeah, know? and you know, I'll, just to just to one more question on the on that avant garde front. Um, why do you think um, just that 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 freestyle self expression? Why do you think that that form of music didn't get greater public recognition? Well, I'll tell you, like, you have some guys that, that play free, sound good, and, and they swing and the whole thing, but it's a different way of playing. Mm -hmm. And guys can jump into it and start playing like that and not really playing like with with um, Ornette Coleman was playing, yeah, you know, yeah. like and, and yeah. Ornette was 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 um, really swinging, you know, and Train was 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 was, was going there too, yeah. you know, like uh, yeah. it's another way of playing, you know, but you still got to have those same elements in it, you know, like uh, the the blues has to be appearing, you know, like. Uh, you know, the swing and the bebop stuff has to be appearing, like uh, the modal stuff has to have to appear with, within the music, you know, and and, and, and the pe people will love it, you know, but like if um, they say, okay, I'm going to play avant-garde and then just regardless of whatever, just, just play anything, yeah, and then yeah. It, it really doesn't work, you know. Right. Because right. I, I know like I, I'll use the avant-garde uh, and now when I play, I use it. I use it all. Right. <laughs> you right. know, I say, okay. I, you know, I be playing. All of a sudden, I, I get into something. That I say, okay. I used to tell the band to lay out because I, I had to. You know, I had something that I had to work out, and I, and I felt like that at some point they were getting in the way of me doing it. So right. like I, I do it by myself for a while, and then bring them, bring them back in. You know. Yeah. yeah. And then doing that, I would. Sometimes I would play the changes, or sometimes I would play. I worked out some other ideas that I couldn't play, and that's because uh, I didn't go over with them. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so yeah. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't get you to talk a little bit about John Coltrane, mm. and I want to begin that discussion by asking you about the very first time you met him. Oh, okay. Well, the very first time uh, that I met Train was like in, in Philly, you know, mm -hmm. like, because uh, he had married Naima. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think my father took uh, took us over, over you know, like, to, you know, you know how families get to, you know, get together right. and say hello and that kind of thing. And I saw John had a, Neck strap on, but it looked like a tie. I said, "Wow, that's a funny looking tie." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, how old, how, how old were you at the time? Uh, maybe like eleven. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know. Were you playing at that time? Uh, somewhat. I was kind of playing piano, but mm -hmm. like, you know, um, yeah, kind of. Right. Yeah, I was fool fooling around. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, like, um, but um, when um. In 1950, I think that must have been 1957, right? 56, something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I think Train had went to New York and came back to Philly, you know, right? And went back. Yeah. And, was, he, uh, was he with Miles at that time? Ah. Uh, I think he was either with Miles or Sid Williams. <coughs> no, no. Yeah, but, but I, I know. I know. During that time, he was he was doing a lot of gigs in Philly, right? You know, and um. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was too young to even. Yeah, but I want you to get back to your story mm -hmm. about the first time you met uh, John Coltrane yeah. and he had that uh, oh, strap. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, really, it's just like, you know, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. you know, like, it, but it wasn't, I, I never knew he played saxophone. Right. You know, and uh, when uh, 1958, uh, we went up to Philly, I mean, we went up to New York, mm -hmm. and, um, with uh, my mother and father wanted uh, John to give us some lessons, you know. So we went up there, and like uh, that's when I really met John Coltrane. I said, "Oh, because like he he was asleep when we got there, and we knew the only way we knew he was awake is when he started hearing a horn, right? You know, so I'm in the playing." 
he must have played for about 45 minutes to an hour before he came out. Right. And um, and I was saying, well, man, he must have a lot of music he's, he's in, 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 in this room that, you know, like, be playing all that stuff. Yeah. And, and but after he came out and I looked in the room, it was no music. Yeah, yeah. Now, was he living in St. Albans at the time? Uh, no, he was living on 103rd and and uh, and Broadway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. It was a Broadway and what's the other street in, in between Broadway and Amsterdam? Amsterdam. Yeah. 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 And, um. Yeah. So then that's that's when I you know like I started. I was figuring out, well, wait a minute, what was he playing? Yeah. You know, what, what is that? And um, later on that day, he showed us, like, um, you know, like his voicings on, on, on piano, how, how he voiced mm -hmm. chords. Mm -hmm. And we wrote them down, and that's how I started learning how to really voice chords on a piano. Yeah. And, um, and also, um, during that time, like, um, what Bobby Timmons came by. I know Bobby Timmons. Yeah. And uh, John had written some changes down on a brown paper bag, you know, and I gave it gave it to him. And um, and I lo I looked at it. I said, man, this looks like hieroglyphics or something. <laughs> you know, I, you know, like what, what is this? And um, and uh, you know, they started playing. You know, and it sounded like the same stuff he was practicing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and Bobby Timmons said, "Man, train, man, why you make why you, why you make things so difficult?" <laughs> you know, that's the first time I heard Giant Steps. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, and I, the first time I began to realize, I said, "Wow, well, okay, well, what is this?" Yeah. You know, yeah. and the fact that like you got to improvise, that means you got to know your scales and your chords, and like so so. so those are things when I got got back home, I had to try to start learning how to do. You yeah. know, like um, I, I, you know, so I was, I thought everybody just read music, right. you know, right. and I found out no, no, it's, it's guys that improvise. Yeah. You know, what was his temperament like when you first met him? Because at this juncture, now he's your uncle by marriage. Mm -hmm. So, what was his temperament like in terms of uh, your relationship with him? Was he uh, like very giving in terms of his uh, teaching you the different uh, aspects of the music at that time? Uh, how how did you guys interact? Yeah, well, you know, like I always always ask me questions, and he would he would he would answer. Yeah, you know, and I, and see. It, it, during that period of time, John used to tell a lot of jokes all, all the time. That's so, interesting. So, you know, he'd be, he'd be, I think when we took the picture with him in the bathroom, uh, he was he was telling jokes, to him, you know, you know, so like, so we might have laugh, laugh at him, you know, um, quite a bit, you know. But yeah. he, was, he was just a nice, down, down to earth um, guy, you know, and you never thought that. Uh, that, uh, that he was who he was. Yeah, you know, he had like, that type of sense of humor. Yeah, you know, because like when, when, I, when I think about it now, I said, man, it's Sharon Coulter, he played with Monk, he played with Miles. Right. And, 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 and he was working on Giant Steps and Countdown when, 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 when we came over to, uh, to visit. So, Amazing story. So, yeah, so I'm saying, wow. I mean, that's where, that's where he was then. You know, so like it's almost like I said, well, I, I'm a catch up. Ain't no catch up. Ain't no catch up. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta go ahead and do your thing because he, he was like gone. You yeah. know, like with the with the expression and all. I mean, the artistry of, of of the whole thing. But I think I really from him, I got a chance to really understand what the artistry is really all about, right. and, and the fact that. Of being able to communicate with your audience, you know, right. which is really important, you know, like, um, uh, and and to, and to play something that that will communicate, you know, like play something that people will feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. like like if you play something that people will feel, they, 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 you know, 
they 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 go they be back because they want that feeling again. Right. You know? What was your biggest takeaway musically from John Coltrane? Uh On the practicing, the understanding of, of uh, scales and chords, and the fact that he told us, he said, like, you know, like, you should write your own music because people will come out to hear you play your own music if they like it, you know. So, therefore, you know, it's, you know, like, I guess you can play standards, but like, if you have your, you do your own music, then, um, you know, you know, like, you, you you know, people will come out to come out to hear you play that if they like it. So, and that's that's the thing that really got me. My brother started in writing. Yeah, yeah. You know, because uh, before I didn't know anything about writing. I thought you had to go to school <laughs> to write. You yeah, know, yeah. and I found out no, you don't have to go to school. You just got to have an idea and work it out. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing and refreshing at the same time to hear you say that as a music educator because uh, it's it really demonstrates how music is really a craft. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, you know, going to school and learning all the logics and, and the things like that, I think that's very, very important. I know you're part of that process as well. But uh, I want to get back to Carl Grubbs, the educator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to tell me just a little bit about the uh, the education institution process of teaching students music, the structure of the institutions. How has that process changed over the years? Well, you know, interesting. Like I had a a class, uh, and I was like, um, what do you call it? like artistic? No, um, artistic. Um, what was it, was it? What am I thinking about, Barbara? The um, I mean, well, I was a guest artist uh, right. at, at, right. at at the school, right. and so so therefore I was doing my own thing, you right. know, like with the kids. Like once I found out, like how to deal with them, um, and um, I began to write some things myself that um, you know that would give them a chance to play, you know, something that wasn't hard. Had a had a groove to it that everybody could could play, um, and you know, and 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 it 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 would be a song. And then as you know, as you, as you go on, you know, like um, you make it just a little more difficult, a little more difficult. But the kids can handle it because at some point, man, I had kids playing Giant Steps and um, Red Clay, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah. saying, wow, okay, and. and and they 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 could play it, right? Because right. like and then too, they were sending me kids that wanted to learn, wanted to play, yeah, and were already taking music lessons and that kind of thing, right? Um, and really, so like it became like um a, really a fun kind of thing to do, you know, like because like when I went, you know, I would go, I would I would go to the kids like and I said, yeah, I heard listen to Charlie Parker this morning, so I really feel like playing, right? <laughs> you know. And one of the kids he made he mentioned that in um in his yearbook, Mr. Gross said he's listening to Charlie Parker. So he really wants to play today. You know. So yeah, but um uh, see I was able to do, do my own thing and I didn't I you know, like as far as the theory part of it, they learn by playing. Right. You know, like if you right. play something the kids see, then the art then you go to the kids see, there's a Two five one you right. know, that that is in the key of C that 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 you learn, and um, and I told them, like you, you use the two five one. Then I would take, I would build another song that would have the two five one, but maybe would go go up, change key to 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 F, you know, like and then you know like and and maybe do that for eight bars and then come back to C. You know, so the kids get a chance to say, okay, you're playing, and then at some point you go to F, and then you use the F scale, you know, and then you can go back to C and use the C scale. You know, I would figure out, depending on what group I had, I would figure out what 
what I could do to, to how get more, to that. How advanced you can yeah. uh, bring the uh, the training process. Yeah, and so some of the kids, man, like I, I you know, like I took them further than than I than I thought. Actually, I had them going out doing gigs. Incredible. You know, and and but like the the, the school said that said that they shouldn't go out and do gigs. You know, it's a you know it's a religious school, so like I said, man, but like you know, I mean. Uh, you know, like, they would go out and do gigs. You know, like I wasn't on the gig. They would, they would go ask some uh, a place could they play and right. You know, and that's it. That's the idea, man. Like if you're gonna play, you know, you should learn learn uh, the business part of it. So yeah, so they had they had um, they had to shut me down on on, on that one. You know, uh, I hated that. I said, man, that that just cramped my style. I felt like um, jazz musicians know a lot of theory already because that's what you're constantly using. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and you, if you know how to use the theory and, and and you know like some standard songs, like you, you can teach anybody. That's right. And I don't think there's any greater school than the school of John Coltrane. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so in our last few minutes, what advice would you give uh, to our younger musicians that are coming up now? Um, well, number one, to really deal with the history of it, mm -hmm. you know, like because, and like I think I did a class for uh, um, a class uh, for for the Clef Clef Club, mm -hmm. and I talked about Robert Johnson. Right. And I, you know, like I didn't know that much about Robert Johnson. I was the young guy, but like. I looked at looked at Robert Johnson. I said, "Well, man, like they say, he was stop in the middle of the road to stop playing and put his hat out, and people would, would give you know give him money, right? You know, so like evidently, what he had going on was some tremendous stuff for for that era. Oh, absolutely. You know, so and I, and actually, I still listen to him today, and like you know, I do too. You know, and I and too. I you know. I, get inspired but like and they, even from the blues guys you know like right. you know like they you know they, they have a, a thing in the air going on and this is where the music comes from you know it's like so, right. so if you embrace right. that then when you go to you know to try to get slick and play some Ty <laughs> Parker stuff and some John Cole Strange stuff and yeah. some Miles stuff you uh, you understand right. where it's, it's coming from. It's a, it's a cool segue too and you know, and what I felt most amazing about uh, Robert Johnson, and back in those days, boy, you had to be real, real special mm -hmm. for somebody to come up with a notion that you sold your soul to the devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah. You, you yeah. had to be somebody real special. You know, he had to really sound good for, for them to, you know, because, because man, you know, like, you know, you know, when 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 you sound that great, you know they say you, it can't be just exactly. something that, that that you just learn how to do. You know you had to do some some um, what do you call yeah, it? Some, some spiritual stuff. Yeah, some nefarious. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but look, he look he, he like his his career was great. Yes. You know, like and and, and although short lived. Yeah. But. Great nonetheless. Yeah, and you know, like, uh, well, the same thing with Charlie Parker. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, that die so young, trained. That, you know, they yeah. die so young, man. But, um, you know, like, when you listen to their, their stuff, man, like, they're, they're, they're giving you lessons and, and yeah. ideas, uh, you know, like, about how things can go and how things can work. And, yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's my inspiration, you know. So, yeah. It's like, you know, like today, you know, like, um, I had some illness problems, but like, uh, you know, that's over with now. So today, my energy is up and like, I'm, I'm ready to go at it, you know, because now I have a wealth of knowledge, information, and I have a wealth of ideas that I want to put down. That's wonderful. So what does the future look like for Carl Grubbs? Well, um... Uh, I'm I'm from I finished doing my recording studio in my basement. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm starting to do uh, some gigs and then make with uh, uh, Ether and and uh, and I, I get the names mixed. Ed Evan, uh -huh. Evan, 
Like, um, I'm going to start using them. We're talking about the Dorsey kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm going to start using them. Um, that is and, so and some, of, some of my uh, gigs. Yeah. And also, like, I, I did a string quartet mm -hmm. along with um, the Inner Harbor Suite. So, like, I, I want to try to write some more stuff um, with uh, using using that format, too. So, yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, I'm, 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 I think I'm gonna get a little freer. So like, I may, I'm gonna go into the admin guard, but I'm gonna go into the admin guard the way that I do it. Right, right. You know? yeah. So my final question to you, and I, I want you to talk about uh, another person that has been an influence on your life, and a person who is also your collaborator. And uh, I want you to talk a little bit about your wife, Barbara. Oh wow. I mean, look, when um I um when when we met, I told her I said, Yeah, you like me because I'm a jazz musician and she said, No, you like me because I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Wow, they, they never told me you like that before. <laughs> but uh look, look Barbara Barbara's been man, so, so, so helpful because, you know, I, I was just doing gigs and uh, I wasn't paying attention to, you know, like um, the real things that I should have paid attention to and so like when I moved here to Baltimore, it's the first time I really had a, a, a day gig, you know, because mm -hmm. like before that, you know, I was just, I would see people um, as I was going home in the morning and I'd see them at night when I went out to play. But then, like, I started, you know, I had to get a day gig, so I said, wow, man, you know. But one of the things that I realized, the people, those people that I haven't seen are people, they have lives, too. That's right. And That's and, right. And, and, and and they got the things that they're doing. So, you know, like, so, like, you know, I mean, that's, that's to me, that, that was good. That was a good experience for me, you know, because, like, I don't have to get up and go, you know, go, do the job, you know, every day, and then come back and play, and you know, like, and um, and uh, so so really, um, that 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 was a good good thing for me, um, and then really, uh, then like uh, we started really actually, um, uh, the gig that I wound up with um, teaching, mm -hmm. and at first um, we just um, uh, well I was just doing some private lessons at the school. You know, and um, they were saying, yeah, well, like, if you, you know, you can go in and, and see what else you can do at the school. And they had this guy that would, had um, a jazz band, and they were playing blue suede shoes. Yeah. So I told them, like, um, I can write a, a blues piece. So I wrote a blues piece, and I brought it in. And he said, yeah, go ahead and work with the kids on playing it. Next thing you know, I had to get it. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh wow, you know, and, but like, one of the things that, that really happened is that all of a sudden I became really legitimate where I was paying taxes, you know, um, you know, those, those kind of things. Handling that, the business. Yeah, side that, that I wasn't doing before, just yeah. doing the gigs in the clubs wasn't, wasn't doing that, so, yeah. you know, like, I don't wind up with, um, you know, I wind up with Social Security. Yeah, you know, way before, That's right. uh, if, if if I kept on going the way I was going, I wouldn't know, know Social Security would, would even exist for me. So, um, I mean, Barbara's been like uh, really a blessing, but you know, now that we really think a lot, I like um, we started the music camp together. Yeah, you know, and, talk a little bit about the music camp. Oh wow, you know, we looked up and we saw everybody had a music camp at some point. So he said, well, well, we can do that too. And uh, so we went about the, the, the process of doing it. Um, and one of the things is like being, being able to get a nonprofit organization, you know, and, uh, and that, you know, that's important to have a nonprofit. Actually, Julius Hemphill, mm -hmm. he like yeah. uh, uh, said like, yeah, every, Every musician should have a nonprofit that 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 they have that that they can really work 
and work with. Absolutely, know? and I totally agree. Yeah, so 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 like we wound up um, getting that together, and, and just the process of like going to one place and staying there for two years, and then then something happened, and we had to go to someplace else, and keep on going until we wound up at Loyola University. Right, and we were there for twenty years, you know, like um, and for you know, like and for twenty years, like we dealt with kids coming from the inner city. Right. Yeah, but not just the inner city. We, we had kids coming out, coming from, from the county. Um, uh, and we would give them a chance to, to, to play an instrument, to, mm -hmm. to, to deal with their talent, to find out whether they were talented or not. Exactly. You know, and, and I, I really, really felt good about that. So I said, wow, you know, like I, I was the guy who was Mr. G. And if anything yeah. happens, you know, and all of them enjoy themselves. Yeah, you know, they, they you know they have instruments that they can play. You know, like they, they you know, like and at the end of every camp, everybody has to get on stage to perform. Right. Something. You know, even had this little guy. He would run. He would. I was running through the camp all, all, all two, two weeks. So when it's time for him to be on, on stage, he ran. I <laughs> can I said, "Well, hey, that's just <laughs> you know." But he, he, he enjoyed himself. Sent him to dancing school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but um, yeah. Let's see. That's the thing, like, and, and even today, man, like, um, we have a nonprofit organization, Contemporary Arts, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that is happening is like, uh, Contemporary Arts is given is doing concerts, uh, and also getting other musicians a chance to perform. You know, besides me, you know, like. Uh, no, we hooked up with uh, the libraries and the county libraries in the city. So, yeah, like, so yeah. we give uh, musicians a chance to play for an hour, um, and and so therefore, if they have a gig during the day, they can also gig in the evening. You know? Right. And um, and actually, at this point, I, I was the director. It's like now I'm just the artistic director. Cause right. Like I'm, you know. I'm, I'm I'm going back into my uh, playing thing, and uh, that is that is that is, is 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 so wonderful to hear. You know, um, I just want to tell you as we close, it's been uh, just a wonderful experience being here with you in your home, and uh, for me, you're not only John Coltrane's nephew; you're a wonderful individual in your own right. You're, you're a wonderful musician, you're a wonderful educator, uh, you're just a great person, and I want to say thank you so very much for your time. It's been a pleasure being here with you and your wife, and I can't wait to get back to <laughs> capture some footage of you playing, mm -hmm. and uh, and again, thank you so very much for your time. I thank you, and I tell you, like Barbara is really, is for me, is the key that unlocked the door. <laughs>